Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. We're live from Stratoconf in uh, Silicon Valley, the heart of Silicon Valley, Santa Clara, the Santa Clara Convention Center. This is day two for us. Uh, the big keynote morning was today. Uh, we had some uh, deep dive sessions yesterday at Strata. Big meetup last night. A lot of energy here. Um, a lot of sponsors, a lot of practitioners. Uh, good show. Uh, we were here last year, as many of you know, and uh, we're really seeing the evolution of big data, uh, both, both Hadoop and outside of Hadoop. Uh, and, and I'm here with my co-host, uh, Jeff Kelly, from wikibon.org, our lead big data analyst. And um, we've got Sandy Steyer, who is the founder, founder or co-founder? Co-founder. Co-founder of 1010 Data, executive vice president at the company. Uh, Sandy and I and Jeff first met last fall at Strata, a very interesting story. Imagine if you had a trillion row spreadsheet. That's what's going to start this discussion. Is that really what you guys can deliver? Yeah, it's, it's, a it's very much like a spreadsheet in the sense that it is a visual tool. Um, you can see all your data in rows and columns the way you do in a spreadsheet. And you can manipulate it the way you do in a spreadsheet so that you can add columns, subtract columns, do various kinds of um, time series analysis and other kinds of things interactively the way you interact with a spreadsheet. Yeah, and this is um, sits on my laptop, right? <laughs> it, well, the, the browser in which it runs sits on your laptop. Yeah, right, but it's all cloud-based is, is, cloud is, 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 the, is the point, right? So, um, so it, how big is the typical spreadsheet? I mean, how much data are we talking about? Oh, it, 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 it varies from something that's really small to something that is, you know, the largest we have in a single table in a single spreadsheet is about a half a trillion rows. Yeah, okay, so half a trillion rows is the, is the, is the, the tip of the bell curve. So, I, Jeff has called you the oldest big data startup. <laughs> You've been around for a while. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, we, uh, my, my co-founder and I were on Wall Street, and we decided in 2000, 1999 actually, that we had had enough of that. And so we started a company, and we decided to use some of the technology and techniques that we had always used on Wall Street, um, and basically bring it to the world as a new product. And the product really was what we've described. It was an ability to interact with a tremendous amount of data in a very natural, transparent, open way. Um, which, as distinct from the way most databases work, which are kind of like black boxes. They're, they're, they're data warehouses in the sense of a, data, of a warehouse where things are stored in there, but to use them, you have to take them out. Um, in our case, you go into the place and you can play with the stuff in the warehouse in a very natural way. Okay, so you're bringing that, everybody talks about it, oh, the, the big barrier, one of the big barriers to big, big data adoption is that, you know, you, a lot of people don't know how to use Hadoop or you know, program and HBase and Flume and, and that environment. So you're say basically bringing tools to the masses. That's right. It, well, the masses, the masses are in, in defined in terms of the kinds of people who can use um, a spreadsheet. Now, not everybody in the world can use a spreadsheet. And not everybody in the world should be using a spreadsheet. You know, there are people who run the meat department in a supermarket who shouldn't necessarily be using spreadsheets. That's not their job. Right. Um, and that's not their interest. Um, the person who runs a company, the CEO, the CFO, shouldn't necessarily be doing spreadsheets themselves. Uh, but, but there are a core group of people, you know, the analysts, both on the business side, the application developers on the technology side, that do and can use spreadsheets. Uh, strategic planners, financial planners, exactly. operational people. I mean, there's a lot of people right. who use spreadsheets to live and die by them. And, and those are the people who develop the applications that the rest of the world uses. Now, you, you came out of the financial services business, I presume, that that's, was that your initial customer base? Uh, our initial customers were, in fact, in financial services. There's nothing about the product which is particular to financial services, but because we knew people there. Sold to your friends. It helped. <laughs> um, well, friends, acquaintances, enemies, whoever, yeah. you know, it <laughs> didn't really matter. Um, but we knew them, so that was, a, that, that was helpful. And, but since then, we've expanded into other areas as well. We have quite a number of retail customers. Um, we have business now in telecom, in pharmaceuticals, insurance, other areas. All right, I want to talk about, well, let's talk about now. So talk about how some of the people or your customers are using uh, the product. I mean, you, uh, uh, you, know, you got retail customers doing point of sale data. Talk about some of those So those there's examples. a very wide range of use, actually. Like a spreadsheet. <laughs> well, yes, although it's in, arguably it's even wider because there is a limit to what you can do with a spreadsheet. And, you know, uh, 
it's not too much of a stretch to say there's no limit to what you can do with tent and data. That's a little bit over the top. But um, there are companies that are using us for their enterprise data warehouse. Really? So everything they do is through tent and data. All their data gets put on tent data. All their, business, all their operational reporting and, and, and all their analysis is done through tent and data. Um, that is the biggest use. And we're talking about very large companies. We're talking about companies that have, you know, that are 20, 30 billion dollar companies. Um, at the other, the other end, it's a good departmental solution. So if there's some department that needs to do some analysis, it works for that too. So, um, can you share some names with us, some of your customers? Um, sure, uh, the, you know, the New York Stock Exchange is a good customer. They, 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 they were really our first customer. Um, most of the big banks, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank. Um, in retail, Dollar General, yep. Rite Aid, AutoZone, GameStop. And, you know, it's a fairly extensive list. So I, I remember reading somewhere, when I was a case study on your website or something about Dollar General using it for point of sale data and giving access to their customers or their supply chain. Right, so that's, that's another interesting thing. Um, in addition to being used as the internal data warehouse at Dollar General, and by the way, the same thing is true at Rite Aid, we also are a great way for companies to share their data with other companies. That is very atypical of a data warehouse. Normally, a data warehouse is a closed thing that is meant to be used by the company itself, and there's no way for an outsider to get access to it. And because we are in the cloud, and because we have this, this spreadsheet interface, it means that it's easy to, to use, and so other people can use the data too, with the proper permissions, of course. Yeah, so um, I, I love what I hear so far. Uh, it almost sounds too good to be true. How do I get data into the the mega scale cloud spreadsheet? Uh, there are two ways. Most companies send us their data, and if it's a lot of data, they send it, they send it on some sort of hard, you know, hard drive. Um, but then, you know, on an ongoing basis, and, and in most cases, FTP serves very well. And so, so companies send us their data via FTP, we load it into our database, into our system, whatever you want to call it, and then they get onto a web browser or through various other connected connection points, use 1010 data as a database or as a spreadsheet depending on their, their preference. Yeah, okay, so um, so that's that gets it in there and then, then you provide services? Is that a serv for pay so service? It's, it's, to it's, it is a service. Um, okay. It's a service, it's a managed database service. So we basically load the data, set up the thing, um, you know, support the customers, and all they really need to do is, aside from getting us the data from wherever it's coming from, uh, is use the product, do the analysis, build reports, and do the stuff which presumably customer c companies are most interested in doing. Yeah, okay, so um, so it's a one-time charge, or it's a sort of big one-time charge with a smaller one ongoing? How does that work? Right. It's, it's an ongoing charge. Yeah, okay. It's a service charge. And so, the you know, I guess in traditional software sales, the way it would typically work is there's a large upfront expense and there's a smaller right. maintenance fee. Right. In our case, the upfront expense is a little bit bigger than the ongoing expense, but not much. You know, there's a little bit of an extra expense to set things up. But basically, you pay the same amount every, every month or every year, depending on how you want to do it, for as long as you use the system. Yeah, I know, Jeff, you know, you've got some questions. So Jeff Kelly just did a study, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, on uh, big data. If you go to Wikibon, look at big data, market size. Uh, 1010 data actually you know, came out you know, very well. I know you guys don't report your revenues. But, um, but Jeff, uh, maybe talk a little bit about um, some of the questions that you have. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wonder if we could dig into the technology a little bit around the scalability, um, both from you know how you enable a spreadsheet to scale to that level, and also how do you, in terms of the user interface, uh, how, how do you? It, it seems to me they could get a little unwieldy with that much data. I mean, how do you, how do you simplify the the user experience so that it doesn't feel like you're you're working with that much data? Well, the answering the second question first, we simplify it by making it look like a spreadsheet, which is a very visual, comfortable. Uh, familiar paradigm to people. So they see the data, you can scroll through it. You have a tr half a trillion rows, you can just scroll through it and look at every hit row if you want, if you have the time. Um, you have to be immortal to do that, but you know, if, if, if that's what you want to do with your, with your <laughs> immortality, then we're happy to fill the, the need. Um, so you, it's very familiar and comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's interactive, you do something, you get a result immediately. You don't have to wonder about how that, where that result came from. You could see the effects immediately. How we do that from a technology perspective 
obviously I can only talk about on certain a certain level. Otherwise, I'd have to kill you, and that's probably not a good thing to do on on TV. No, not a lot. We've never, uh, we never had that on the cube, I don't think. Or even not so, on TV. It's not like a <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Um, but suffice it to say that we, again, we, we really use a combination of very old technology that's sort of been forgotten by the rest of the world um, and some newer things. And we make use of new hardware, obviously, in interesting ways. And we've just, it's just, we've been doing it for a long time. And we were our own users mm -hmm. when we were on Wall Street. So, you know, we did our own technology development for our own use. I was really on the business side. My co-founder, Joel Kaplan, was on the business side. And so we kind of learned what it, what it took to do things in a Wall Street, and a you know, pretty demanding type of environment. And we just replicated that. And so it's a combination of techniques. And, uh, you know, some of them are, are, are interesting. Some of them are probably proprietary to what we do. But most of them are just, it's a, it's a you know, it's, it's the, the example I'll give is, it's a, it's a, we're like a chef that puts together ingredients that, you know, pretty much is available on the supermarket shelves. It's how you put them together that matters. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if we could kind of draw on your experience. You've been in this business for a long time, so you've, you've been in this well, well before we were calling it big data. So my question would be, you know, how has the how have the requirements changed? How have the use cases changed of analyzing large volumes of data over the last 12, 13 years you've been around? Um, as you as you enter kind of new markets beyond financial services, um, to kind of take us through that evolution. What, well, I think that, that a couple of things are, are changing. First of all, the, the, there was always big data. But the data is getting bigger, so that makes a difference. And it's bigger enough that it, you know, the traditional technologies are beginning to fail, which is the whole reason why the Strata Conference exists on some level. Um, the, in terms of the way it's used, I think competition, just the fact that people are beginning to look at things in a more sophisticated way means that kind of everybody has to. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, let's say, use a retailer as an example, you, you, you mentioned retail. If, a re if, if all your competitors are doing, let's say, basket level analysis, that is to say they're looking at every single item that the store sell, that the chain sells, and they know that if somebody buys one product, what other products do they buy at the same time? You know, that's mm -hmm. a very detailed kind of analysis. If, if, your co if your competitors are doing that, you better do it too. And so there is, I think there's just a, it's, it's a little bit of a feedback loop that the more people realize that, you know, there is data to be analyzed and the, the sort of the early adopters begin to do that, the, uh, the later adopters have to follow suit and then the early adopters have to find something new to be early about and they have to, you know, to maintain their competitive edge and so it, it's, it's again, it's, it's sort of a feedback loop that ultimately means that everybody is going to be doing this sort of thing. Sandy, what do you make of this conference and these startups exploding? You've been at it for 10 years now and um, coming at it with a non-traditional approach, which I love, um, love you know, different, different ways of attacking problems, but what do you make of this whole ecosystem and the development of, uh, and the hype around you know, big data? Well, I love the hype, uh, obviously. It, <laughs> it does nothing but help us. Um, I think that in terms of people's, and also, it, you know, per, per the previous question, it actually heightens people's un, um, appreciation of the fact that they better be analyzing big data because it's what everybody's talking about. So it drives customers to us and to other and our competitors as well. But it, it helps everyone. I think that I think that you know so a lot of the solutions that are being offered are very technical in nature. Um, I think they serve a very important purpose because the traditional relational database has some limitations, and these these alternatives like Hadoop and things like that um, do. Are, you know, do offer um, a solution to that problem. Uh, and I think we offer an, 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 a yet still another solution, which is not quite as new on some level, but it is new to a lot of, you know, to, to the young people at this conference. I think what we're doing is seems pretty new because they weren't around 30 years when, the, you know, there are not many people who actually remember some of the techniques that we're using. Um, IBM was using similar techniques 35 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, that's pretty mainstream, but even IBM stopped using those techniques, and I think to their de to well to the market's de detriment. Yeah, we were just talking to Billy Bosworth, and you know we've been around a long time. We've seen it all before. There's very little we we haven't seen. It's just the way it's applied that's different, and the way the market's absorbing it. Right, there's, there's nothing new under the sun on some level, and so you know I think, but 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 I think there is a you know in general technology nowadays has so much more attention. Yeah. And so that's and that and that's you know it's it's basically spilling over into the business world, 
so that's a good thing when you have some a piece of technology to offer. And you have all this data that you need to do something with. Sandy Steyer, uh, 1010 Data, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Mega spreadsheets in the cloud for people like us who actually want to use big data. Uh, thanks again, it was great perspectives and, uh, and good luck with everything. Uh, Jeff, thank you, and we will be right back after this short break from Stratacomp.